Hey guys, today I thought I would take a second and um, review some of the resetting field targets that's uh, available out there. Um, a lot of these are mass produced, but we're also going to look at one model that's uh, a custom made um, resetting field target. Uh, we're going to look at targets from um, Remington, uh, Gamo, Umarex, Crossman, Air Venturi, and then I'm going to take a look at a, a custom metal target from uh, Paul's custom metal targets. Um, one thing uh, a lot of the um, mass-produced targets have in common is they all come with these um, stakes. But to be honest, I really never use these stakes because um, over time they just work loose. So we're just going to skip that and I'll show you what I use. So instead of using the stakes, what uh, seems to work really well is to actually mount your... Um, resetting target onto a center block and use some clamps like I have here. These clamps I bought on Amazon like a, a pack of, I don't know, six or something like that uh, for less than two dollars a piece. Um, I believe the description on Amazon called these four inch heavy duty steel clamps. Uh, they hold the, the target on very securely. Um, so that's really the best way to to mount your, your target. Um, Always, I've always found that it's, it's best to use your center block um, facing you long ways um, because what happens is if you, if you, if you have it parallel to you, um, whenever you're resetting the target and pull it, uh, say if it was this way, you can roll the, the uh, center block over. So if you do it um, uh, long ways facing you, um, it's, it's very straight. So the good thing about the uh, Remington target one of the few good things actually is um, there's multiple shapes available. Uh, this is the boar, there's a, uh, a crow and a rabbit I believe that's available. So you do have some selection there. Uh, it comes with uh, a pretty cheap string, like a kite string, which um, with exposure to the sun and moisture, it'll uh, rot fairly quickly. Um, it doesn't come with a chain uh, to attach to the reset. Um, the reset tab there um, so it's you know it's you can in certain situations the string will get wrapped around the the mechanism and then you, you just can't reset it so it doesn't come with a chain and a cheap string uh, the problem that the Remington target has is push washers or push nuts and I'll show you those now so these are push nuts there's one up here too uh, after I don't know, 50 shots or so, the first thing that's going to happen is these push nuts are going to work loose and pop off. Your target's going to fail. Um, whenever I buy this kind of target, the very first thing I do before I even shoot it once is to replace this hardware. And all you have to really do is um, pop these off, uh, push the pin out, go to the hardware store, buy a uh, small um, bolt and a nut, a locking nut, put on there, and... Um, it makes this target much more reliable. Uh, this target also uses a push nut down here on the main mechanism. Um, I've even taken this off and you have to cut. Lots of times they'll spot weld this uh, bolt here, shaft here onto the base. Uh, if so, you have to work that loose, pop that out and put an actual bolt and nut on it with a locking nut, nylon nut. Uh, if you do all that, this target becomes much more reliable. This target does have a uh, rear-mounted reducer. Uh, basically, you loosen this bolt and you have these rotating uh, plates give you, um, uh, let's see, three different sizes of, of kill zones to shoot at. Um, the first size with no reducer at all would be an inch and a half. Uh, you uh, there's a reducer for one inch and then one that's supposed to be a half inch reducer. I measured it. It's more like nine sixteenths if you want to get really particular about it. So this target would be fine for uh, home use or a, just a local match. If it was an official AAFTA uh, sponsored event, you can't use rear reducers. If you use reducers, it has to be a front facing reducer. So just keep that in mind. This target uh, I was able to buy for $23. So this is what the uh, same Remington style target, this is the crow, looks like. 
after it's been shot, you know, hundreds of times, I've repainted it and repainted it. Um, it's holding up pretty good. I've replaced, I have replaced the, uh, the hardware back here. Um, so that's made it much more reliable. Another thing, this uh, target has this weird little spring tab here. Um, I'm not sure if that's really necessary, but it's there. It's the only target that has that. Uh, that tends to get worn and weak. Um, but besides that, uh, it's been a reliable target after I've replaced the hardware. As you can see, maybe you can see, uh, how the metal has started to warp a lot just from all the shots over and over again. I'm shooting with a, about a night, I think my rifle is, uh, it's tuned for about 19 foot-pounds of energy, uh, shooting a pretty heavy pellet. Uh, maybe you can see how the reducers are warped. Um, maybe you can see from the side here how, you know, after so many shots, the reducers start to warp. It's really not a big deal. They still work. Um, so uh, that's just an example of what this target will look like after shooting it just hundreds of times. Okay, now we're going to look at the Gamo, the Umarex, and the Crossman. Um, I'm lumping these all together because they're all made the same way. They all have the same exact design, probably made in the same factory for all I know. Um, the good thing about these is they do have spring assist on the uh, faceplate um, to make them uh, work well. Uh, they have chains. Uh, they have uh, a nylon pull string, which should last a lot longer. Um, and the other good thing about them is they have actually have swappable faceplates. These faceplates are bolted to the mechanism, so you can actually replace them or swap them out or put something custom on them. The metal on these uh, faceplates could be a little thicker. It's not the thickest metal in the world. Uh, it's very comparable to the uh, Remington targets. Um, they do use a uh, locking nut here on the, the main mechanism, which is a good thing. But the bad thing is, on all these, all these Gamo, Umarex, and uh, the Crossman targets, they use uh, push nuts on the, uh, the mechanism there, and that's the first thing that fails. And so just like the Remington target, you're going to have to replace those uh, to make it a, a more reliable target. Uh, the other thing is uh, reducers. Uh, no rear reducer. Uh, the reducer actually slides into the front. Just like that. Uh, you've got five different sizes of uh, reducers. You've got, uh, well, of course, with no reducer, it would be an inch and a half. When I measured it, it was actually an inch and nine sixteenths. Um, the next step down is an inch and a quarter, which when I measured it, it was more like inch and three sixteenths. A three quarter inch reducer, and then a half inch reducer, and a three eighths of an inch reducer. The only, uh, the bad thing about these reducers is. I'm not too crazy about them flopping around whenever you, you're shooting it or resetting it. I've actually had these things just fly completely out whenever I'm resetting the target. Just uh, the motion of the target flying up and this actually flying off. Uh, to resolve that, you could either, like I did, bend the tab a little bit where it's a, a little bit snugger fit. I guess another thing you, you could do is put a, like a sheet metal screw or something in the in the hole where it's where it slides in just to make it a little more secure or if you want to make it one size and never change it i guess you could spot weld it on there so the price on these targets uh, the gamo i was able to get for 26 dollars umarex was 20 dollars and uh, the crossman is 20 dollars i didn't buy the crossman target um, the zombie target but um, if you want something that's a little more say exotic you could go with the the zombie uh target but it's pretty much the same mechanism as these as these just has a different faceplate so this is the air venturi right on the run target uh, the good on it is um, that the faceplate is a little bit thicker metal and um, the the what i like most about this target is they use great hardware um, you don't have to re replace any push nuts or anything like that all these uh, connections are held together with nuts and bolts, uh, locking nuts, even the the main mechanism there. So I like this target a lot that I don't I don't have to 
do any work on it right out of the box to make it reliable. Uh, it does have a rear reducer uh, like a lot of the other targets. Um, it has uh, so three sizes uh, with no reducer being an inch and a half which when I measured it, it was more like an inch and nine sixteenths. Uh, one inch reducer and then a half inch reducer, which would be, uh, when I measured it, it was more like nine sixteenths of an inch. This uh, target, I was able to buy it for $22. Uh, the only, the bad thing about it is it comes with a cheap string uh, and no, no chain. Um, you can just swap those things out, add your own. Uh, so this is my favorite mass produced target right now. So next we have a target here from uh, Paul's Custom Targets. I believe his website is paulscustomtargets.com. Uh, Paul makes these by hand, cuts them out by hand and hand paints them. Um, the good on these, uh, you know, it's custom shapes. Uh, you can, whatever you can think of that you'd like to see, he can make. Uh, he, he has a lot of uh, ideas that he's already made as well. Um, and the paint, uh, custom painted, uh, targets is you know, something very different. Uh, what's really great about this mechanism is the kill zone, the fa uh, paddle is right against, fits flush against the faceplate, so there's no weird shadows. Um, that's pretty unique. Um, he uses really thick steel on his uh, on the whole construction, so it's it's made to last. The good thing about this target is uh, the construction is all welded construction and there's really only two moving parts um, and uh, where it is necessary to use nuts and bolts he's used lock locking nuts uh, so good hardware he also uses uh, these piano uh, springs to uh, to help it work correctly and work like it should uh, you also don't have to really lubricate this target which is kind of unique uh, it's made it's a, sort of a friction design it's made uh, to not be lubricated the only thing you might have to do is if it does get rusty is to take a little steel wool to this right here where the uh, reset works here if this gets rusty enough you might have to that's the only thing i can think of that you might have to do to it uh, all welded design thick metal a um, few moving parts uh, it's made to last this target, he's designed it to uh, work for uh, all the way down to four foot-pounds of energy. So, um, you know, it's made for even the lowest power um, field target rifles to work really well with. All these targets are supposed to, but he guarantees it on, the, on uh, his, his target. It actually comes with a one-year guarantee um, to not fail. And believe it or not, he will repaint the faceplate on these uh, if, if they get beat up bad enough. and. You don't feel comfortable painting repainting the, the faceplate if you ship it to him he'll actually re repaint it and uh, ship it back at your expense as far as shipping goes but he'll repaint the the faceplate for you uh, this target has no reducers so it's pretty much a set uh, kill zone size uh, this target is more for a serious field target uh, shooter um, so and in that case you're probably going to want to buy multiple targets with different kill zone sizes anyway um, it's a bit more expensive at $60, but uh, it's definitely made to last. So that's a look at some of the uh, targets that are available out there, both mass-produced and then a, a custom target. Uh, a lot of the mass-produced targets, you have to replace some hardware, except for the Air Venturi. It seemed to be the one that came with the best hardware of the mass-produced ones. Uh, so whether you're looking to just uh, buy some targets for your backyard, or if you're looking to set up a, a course uh, for a small club or for practicing. That's some things to look out for. Uh, I hope this was helpful and um, as always aim small, miss small and I will see you later.